That breaking news in Indianapolis man's behind bars after authorities in Johnson County say he may have been planning a potential act of domestic terrorism. Police say Christopher Byrne had a gun, ammo, and a potentially toxic explosive in his car when he was pulled over. We have full team coverage at 6 o'clock, starting with our Liz Adiola and the latest details on the investigation. Liz. Greenwood police say Christopher Byrne was pulled over during a traffic stop for not wearing a seat belt. That was near US 31, and they say once they pulled him over, that's when they made several alarming discoveries. They say that once they searched his car, they found that the 31-year-old had a rifle with 100 rounds of ammunition. A scope and a handmade suppressor were attached to that rifle. In his back seat, police found water bottles filled with bleach and ammonia. They also had to call the bomb squad just to remove those potentially toxic items. This was not Burns first run in with the law. He was already convicted of theft in Marion County in 2015. That's when authorities found stolen police equipment in his Indianapolis apartment. They also found a rifle that had been stolen out of a police officer's car before that police officer's car was set on fire. He is now behind bars facing new charges, but police say federal prosecutors are not calling this an act of terrorism. When it comes to charging in a court of law, you can't you can't go on, well, we think he was going to do this or that. I mean, even conspiracy, he has to make an overt act towards committing, and he has to talk about committing the crime and then make an overt act. Byrne is now in jail being held on a $1 million bond. He is facing charges for being a habitual traffic violator and also for carrying a weapon without a license. Reporting live in Greenwood, Liz Adiola, RTV6. Thank you, Liz. And Call 6 Investigates Rafael Sanchez here joining us now. And we know that Christopher Byrne proclaimed to be a sovereign national. You have covered that movement extensively. That's a big red flag to police. I've covered this one for the last 10 years. And police fear sovereign citizens, Jason, because they don't fear the law. They don't believe the law applies to them. In fact, in 2010, a father-son duel killed police in Arkansas. And sovereigns often will file fake financial paperwork, believing that the government owes them money. In Alabama recently, Everett Stout and his wife Miriam, you see there, got in trouble. Just this month, Stout was convicted to 20 years in prison for trying to rip off an RV dealer. His partner is still facing criminal charges. And back here at home, these are the latest cases that I'm working on. Brent Swallers is seeking $1.5 million from the city. He opposes the code inspector who says that he must clean up that property. Swaller says the city is the wrongdoers. And late last year, John Joe's Bay filed a federal lawsuit. He's demanding that the city repay him for 40 years of property taxes. Bay believes he's owed $556 million. Plus, he's also asking a court for an extra $11 billion. So these folks also just pack in the courts with all these frivolous lawsuits. The Southern Poverty Law Center, which tracks hate groups, includes sovereign citizens. And Jason, a poster boy for this movement, Timothy McVeigh, who was responsible for the 1996 Oklahoma City bombing. Now, in this case involving Mr. Byrne, it's unlikely that the U.S. Attorney's Office will seek terrorism charges. Australia will continue to follow. We know you will. Thank you.